Is your mic muted? Yes. Ah. The case. The <laughs> All right. Start. Thank you for the introduction. No problem. Um, no, I'm I'm really glad to be here. This this is really it. This is the one qualifier that I really don't want to miss. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think that the competitive scene is stronger than it's ever been before. We got eight teams here today, and I think that each and every one of them are a potential candidate of taking that DreamHack qualifiers uh, first spot. Uh, not a single one of them is going to be a pushover, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm ready. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, I, I, I got to agree with you to definitely do this. I mean, really, it's you look at the brackets right here. Um, obviously, you know, a couple of these teams, in fact, the one we're going to be casting here to kick things off, you may see DSPN, you may be asking yourself, wait, who are these guys? Well, again, you look at the roster and you notice, okay, well, there's definitely some quality players here, and they're the ones facing what is technically the number one seed in Bad Monkey Gaming going into these qualifiers here. So, yeah, no doubt top eight here as far as eight of the better teams right now in competitive heroes in New Earth. It really is going to be interesting. It's ultimately going to be five qualifiers, guys, by the way. But, again, how every single qualifier works, each it, which, when, whichever team wins the, the qualifier, they advance on. They don't need to participate, of course, in further qualifiers. So, again, this is just the beginning, but ultimately this is where every single team is, of course, here. And it's going to be, it really is going to be fun to see which of the teams ultimately advance on. So again, the match that we're covering though, Bad Monkey Gaming versus Team Disband. No Stone Gaming versus Fresh is the other match going on. The other, the bottom portion, that'll be actually later today. And so we will get to cover one of those two series as well. So the coverage wise, we definitely get to cover a fair amount here. So looking forward to that. Um, anyways, BMG, before we start going to the draft, we have to mention this. If you don't, if you haven't heard by now, there's probably a chance, it hasn't been too public knowledge, but uh, Bad Monkey Gaming, a slightly different roster, and it is official. Kraken, no longer a part of the team. He was removed from the team. Don't know the exact specifics, of course, as usual. But apparently, you know, just things weren't working out, I guess, after the World Finals. They went to the World Finals, and then the roster change happened. So Mighty Marcus, actually, the new fifth here for Bad Monkey Gaming. So now that, that's interesting. I don't, I don't know if you have any insight on it, Snowy, or if you're kind of like everyone else with speculation, but... It was an interesting hear, or interesting to hear that, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, usually, a Rosa change is something that builds up over time. It's not something that happens uh, spontaneously. Um, usually, it comes down to uh, game decisions, or um, I don't know, maybe you don't agree on certain drafts, or uh, can be as simple as if you don't agree with a player on personal level. I don't know. It's something that builds up over time, at least. And I guess that BMG they wanted to end season three with their main roster. They felt like everyone really deserved to go to Thailand, but now when it's over, they might look to uh, try something new. They want to like reshape themselves, like get ready for the dream hack and the next season and so on. And Mike Marcus is a really good player. He's uh, an offensive player, which really fits BMG's playstyle. And I was in a team matchmaking game with him um, the other day, and he said, you know, now when I was going to start with, uh, playing with BMG, I got to learn how to pick up Veiled Roth more. <laughs> That's like the one thing that he mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh that that's that's a safe call right there. So that, that, that's good by him. But you know, again, Mighty Marcus, it's that that that's the other th thing I find really interesting. That's actually yeah, uh, Quincy making a good point right there. Cracky, you know, I was double checking that he is officially part of the fresh roster now. So I would assume he's playing today against Nullstone Gaming. So he's obviously still in the scene. He's still playing and everything. Now joining a, another very quality team in Fresh over there. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. But but to, to replace a player like Cracky again coming off the World Finals. It would, it would be one thing if it was, like, a big-name player, but, you know, Mighty Marcus, he's not the most well-known player. I mean, sure, the community, the competitive scene may know him as far as players go, but as far as the fan base goes, I mean, really, a lot of people may not have even heard of this guy for the most part. So it, it really is going to be interesting. But you know what? Enough about all that. we got to talk about this draft, man. We're almost finished, in fact. So let's just do a quick run-through right here. The initial bans, uh, it was looking at – oh, I did have to join late, so I'm not even sure what the initial bans were. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, but uh, uh, point is, yeah. <laughs> uh, point is, we do have the picks here. So let's go over those. Tremble, Midas, Legionnaire, and Moira on the side of Bad Monkey Gaming. You got Magmus, Swiftblade, Pyromancer, and Cthulhu Font on the side of Team Disband. So what, what are you looking at so far here, Snowy? Um, the one thing that stands out to me is that the Legion team's draft is relatively passive and a little bit too greedy in a sense. They don't really have any solid stunts. Midas needs to get level 4 before she can hit her combo, mm -hmm. and even if she does, I mean, Mora and Legionnaire is not the most reliable heroes to follow it up on. And now Wretched Hag, another like 
hero without any real lockdown. So I feel like it's going to be real tough to deal with the early aggression that's definitely coming out from the, our Hellborn team. And Team Disband, I mean, we saw them last weekend, and I'm sh sure the BMG made a research on them, or at least looked into some of their replays. And, I mean, they should know for a fact that DSBN, they like to take it early game. They like to put pressure on their opponents. They like to go, for example, at Polky on Swiftblade. They assassin Shroud on Parasite. I mean, these kind of offensive, really uh, strong uh, gank items. And I'm just surprised that they're going for a uh, defensive draft like this. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's a really good point. You know, that we got to obviously see a little bit of this team here and ultimately qualifying uh, for what is now the this first DreamHack qualifier. So that's good for them. And, and you know, getting into the first one's big too because you, you will continue to, even if you don't win this one, you do qualify for them. The next qualifier and, and so on. So getting into this first one really built up some momentum moving forward. That final pick, Arachna. I mean, holy crap. We are seeing some interesting stuff right now. We did see Arachna recently. And... and I'm blanking, honestly, if it was by them or it was by somebody else, but they, we did, it was by Zibi. Okay, that's right. Yeah, it was by Zibi afresh. It's going to be played by Pewee here uh, in terms of uh, Arachna goes. And I personally, you know, I, I like Arachna. I like seeing her play as more of a ganker, ultimately. We've kind of talked about that before, but that, now that, that's an interesting final pick, though. I mean, <laughs> what is your take on it? It certainly fits their lineup. Uh, the early aggression and kind of provide some kind of late game presence as well. But I think it comes down to the um, the last pick, Wretched Hag, for the Hell and Legion team. They picked up the Wretched Hag, and it was quite quite obvious that he was going to on the suicide lane, seeing as they already have the uh, Tremble and Legionnaire on their safe lane. And I mean, one versus one. I mean, you only need to commit one hero if you pick a hero like this, Arachna. She's very good in one versus one situations. You can harass your opponent without taking creep aggro thanks to your uh, passive spell precision. Uh, because it actually grants you true strike and therefore it's not going to aggro your creep. So <laughs> Wretched Hag, I don't think she's even going to be able to get more than a few levels up here. Arachna is going to have complete free farm and I just feel like at this point, I mean, this band, they're looking good. They're looking to take all the free lanes and that's never a good thing <laughs> yeah. if you're the enemy team. Yeah, in this case, Bad Monkey Gaming. Now, we do have a little bit of an engagement here, Moira. Oh, my God, just out of range. If they reacted a split second sooner, that very likely would have been Moira. By the way, Rob X3, that is fusing to clarify. So, no, that two isn't a new player. <laughs> that is uh, indeed the captain still of, uh, of Bad Monkey Gaming. So, uh, But, yeah, again, the other thing with Mighty Mark is kind of wondering, you know, with him as a player, was he going to be playing maybe a different role? Were they going to swap out brawls? It looks like it is going to be him just simply stepping in one for one in terms of the role here playing more that middle now obviously he's playing the legionnaire here and, and so this is kind of intriguing to me you know crack a for bmg it was the one known to play the legionnaire in that middle eventually develop into the jungle we saw this quite a bit going into the world finals and at the world finals even but this is a different player you know you gotta wonder how comfortable mighty marcus is uh doing this now it looks like actually he's gonna start pure jungle here right off the bat. Now, that, that's interesting because BMG, now it's Legionnaire, so maybe it's not too surprising, but BMG doesn't usually do this. They usually run a middle Legionnaire first. Yeah, interesting point. I, I agree. I have never seen Mike Marcus play Legionnaire uh, before, so it can definitely come back and bite them in the ass if they're not careful. Uh, but, I, I'm, but I'm sure, I mean, that BMG, like, they talked over or talked it over with Mike Marcus before he joined the... Uh, um, team like are you able to join this hero i mean this is the kind of hero that more or less made us win the off season or like that was their hidden secret more or less mm -hmm. that took people off guard and i mean he's i'm sure he's been practicing it quite a bit and um let's see mora actually counter warded one ward down here already for the hellborn team so um not a single uh, creep uh, is blocked so far so yeah he doesn't necessarily have to go offensive um but uh, as of right now, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. He is, he's just looking to get levels. And, I mean, Legion team, they're not looking to fight whatsoever. They're just looking to prevent Hellborn team from getting those easy kills early on. Yeah. Now, this is definitely again, kind of interesting here. Ruta Z obviously ends up as a short lane Midas in the end. They sent Balthazar and Tremble to the middle lane, of course. We've been watching them every now and then. Uh, they, they're trying to set up as, as team just spanned. Clearly, uh, they were at least, but in the end, Balthazar was playing a little bit too defensive, and uh, Pyromancer is forced to go all the way around, eventually going to make his way to the top lane, actually. So 
Uh, we'll see how that works out for them. But yeah, so, so, so some mix-ups across the board here from BMG. Not used to seeing things all set up as they are, but you know, with a different player joining the roster, maybe, maybe that is uh, the time to maybe change things up a little bit despite the success. You do see Legionnaire, yeah. He's in some trouble right here. He's trying to get away from Parmanser. So obviously, he knows he's going to get cut off, so he goes the other direction. Going to be stunned. Spin from Swift Play does come out, and this should be a bloodlust. And it will be. Mighty Marcus goes down to start things off. You do see a blink away coming out from Boxy. He will be fine, but yeah, Legionnaire just simply got cut off right there. And good job by Swift Play getting over there in time. Yeah, good job by Swift Play. Good job by Panny. I love the rotation that he actually like picked up on this. That felt like I mean, uh, it's a mine in the sail lane. We're not necessarily going to be able to kill him early on, and it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, because, I mean, Amidas with farm, it's not going to provide too much. He's going to get these levels anyway, so I'm just going to sit on Legionnaire's ass, and I'm going to make sure. Oh, engagement in the mid. Oh, my God. He's going to drop. No, he no. will survive. The Darks were him initially, and he is going to live. Holy crap. Illusions blocked Swift Blade. Did they? Okay. Yeah. That's unfortunate. He, he, he didn't manage to get the full spin off. Damn, that was really unfortunate. Yeah. And actually, look at this now. You see Legionnaire, he was trying to just do a stack right here, farm up, but Cthulhu comes right over, not only stops the stack, but even steals the Minotaur from him. So it's safe to say Legionnaire, he's going to find himself in a very troublesome spot. So yeah, they miss a go in the middle lane, but look at Swiftplay, man. Almost 400 gold per minute uh, to start here. Of course, that Bloodlust kill is doing a lot of the a lot of the work there, but also a 13-5 and five creep score uh, on top of that right now. So it seems like, I know it's still early on, only three and a half minutes in, but... Uh, what do you think BMG is kind of almost doing wrong here? Do you, do you think they should be changing something up? or? I don't know what they can do at this point. I just feel like it came down to the draft. The uh, Hellborn team outdrafted them uh, big time. They don't have what it takes to deal with the early aggression coming out from this band. Uh, they're actually going to go try to find Panny here. They're going to go offensive. Uh, Transmute procs right there on a Pyromancer. It is a level 1 Pyromancer. Magnus line stun though. You do see it the ball following up a charge as well. Legionnaire. Pyromancer going to try to get himself killed with the neutrals maybe if anything. They do take out Legionnaire again. And now Midas going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cthulhu Font. Will get the kill on the elephant. But Magnus does it. One more auto attack. And he gets it off. A smackdown kill coming out. And actually a double tap for Teltuk when it's all said and done playing the Magmus right there. So Legionnaire another death and two for one exchange coming out on top of favor of uh, Team Disband in the end. Yeah, this is not the kind of changes that uh, uh, the Legion team should be looking at this uh, or at this point. Uh, they don't have what it takes to deal with engagements in this early on into the game. And I mean, giving a double tap to Magmus this early on, I mean, he's going to have Steam Boots or Ghost Marchers or whatever he feels like picking up at this point. And I mean, Getting that early pull key on him is not only going to secure them taking a lot of or winning a lot of ground into the early game. If they get some offensive wards right now, I don't feel like Legionnaire, he's going to get this pull key anytime soon. And I mean, we got way fix here on Swift Blade as well in the mid. It's not played by Pewy this time, so I'm not sure if he's going to go for the same kind of PK route. But if he does, I, I just don't see the Legion team uh, being able to respond. That's a good point, yeah. We, we did see that the last time Pee-wee was playing, and sure enough, for, uh, for Team Disband here going that Porta route very aggressive. But, uh, yeah, he is playing the Arachnid. And, and, you know, talk about another hero that, you know, has potential to get a portal key too, despite, you know, not being the everyday pickup on a hero like Arachna. But, again, it makes sense. If you're looking to be pretty aggressive, why not get a portal key on a hero like Arachna, jump in there, get the ulti off easily, start applying the slow and doing some good damage. So uh, I'm intrigued to see uh, whether or not that is going to be – I mean, how, how would you feel? if Arachna actually goes a portal key here or should he actually go more of the routine route and more of the farming style? Ooh, I, I, I mean, it depends on what Swift Blade uh, tends to do, I feel. If he goes for the uh, portal key, I don't really feel like Arachna should do it too. Uh, she is going to be a little bit squishy. I mean, she kind of... Um, uh, is going to fall victim to the Legionnaire portal key otherwise if he manages to get it sometime soon. Um, actually, Ketelfant might find Might Marcus. Might Marcus is level 5, by the way, so he's really doing a good job, even though he's shut down and being chased by this Hellborn team. He, yeah. He's been able to find the levels. If he gets level 6 as well, I don't think that the Ketelfant and Power Monster is going to be able to keep up the aggression in the oh. enemy forest. <laughs> <laughs> that's so unfortunate. Uh, but that's how we're acting. Spiderling, it's going to chase you down forever. It chased him down for so long. He blinked over the ledge initially, had to go all the way around, but eventually caught up to him. And a couple of autumn attacks later, it takes him out. And he wasn't even able to get the double damage rune. That was right in front of him. So, uh, well played right there by Pee Wee. Speaking of him, another 1,000 gold saved up, actually. For him right now, and he's up there in the GPM chart. So, how about this? Team Disband making a big statement here to kick things off in game number one. Again, I know it's early, don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but this is the 2015 World Champions 
we're talking about it. Bad Monkey Gaming. It is their first official match, though. You know, we, we got to see that. We were talking about that with Sync. Sync's coming off a very disappointing performance in Thailand, to say the least. Uh, they they really took it to Reason Gaming, though. They, they defeated them three games to nothing, and it was just pretty much all Sync when it was all said and done uh, for the most part in that series. So uh, BMG, on the other hand, being the world champions and all going to get the team, dis team disband here for the DreamHack qualifiers. Again, off to, uh, off to a slower start. Top lane, though, they are going to collapse onto Iraq. Now, that will be a kill as Legionnaire decapitate to finish him off. So you're right, though. Mighty Marcus, man, for a guy that started off with two deaths, he really is doing pretty damn well here, and that's necessary for BMG. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, you, one quick thing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on my part or if it's on your part, but a lot of people are telling me that my microphone is really low at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, it sounds fine to me. I'll, I'll turn you up a little bit here. To help out there. There yeah. we go. Hopefully that's a little better at least. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, getting these kind of kills are crucial for BMG, and it's really good that they are uh, still like trying to put pressure onto the Hellborn team. But I mean, and then it just comes down to the draft. I'm not sure what they were thinking drafting this greedy. Uh, Baltasar, he has transitioned here to the bot lane, and I like this, but Hellborn at the same time, they need to keep up the pressure. They cannot sit back and let BMG recover. Not in this position. Pyre Monster is level 3 only. He desperately needs level, and at this point he's not going to get it from farming. He needs those kills. They should pick up some early aggression items. I'm not sure, actually. I, I was under the impression that Magnus was doing much better, uh, especially with that double tap, but it seems like he's slacking off a little bit. He's below 300 GPM now, and yeah, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I really I, like them to, you know, keep the pressure up down here with the Kitoff fans, maybe even uh, transfer the uh, Swift Blade down here. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a suicide Magmus here. You're right, he got that double tap, but Pyromancer left him very early on. And, you know, Magmus versus a Midas especially, not the friendliest matchup there for him, I would think. So, you know, Teltec uh, getting by at least at 280 gold per minute, doing pretty solid. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, definitely was a little bit higher there and that kind of slowing up a little bit. But, yeah, Panty be level three. That's, that really is standing out to me. He does manage to have boots, which is great, but uh, definitely want those levels on him, of course. To be fair, Moira is also level three, uh, being played by Fusen here for BMG. You see Veiled Rock coming out, so you talk about that. That's really one thing to learn, <laughs> if anything, if you're Mighty Marcus joining BMG. Get that Veiled Rock. He's going to use it early on. Ooh, he's spotted, though. At least he comes out of the field right now. They are still going to try to jump oh. Swift Blade right here. Charge coming in. It's a collapse on top of him. We'll get the taunt off, but it's not going to be enough to hold him in place. You see Magnus coming in. A counter stun. The eruption channel. Is it going to go off? Yes, it is. Down goes Legionnaire. Well, Midas can take it out as well. The Swift Slashes will cut him down. And a two for nothing exchange right there. Wretched Hag. She should be fine. Maybe not, actually. Magnus tons. And the trample comes out from the elephant. Teletech with another double tap. But at what cost here? Trample comes in. The obliterates up, though. The spin. And down. Oh. Oh tremble God. actually it's a double tap for Gwefix it's gonna be more in your genocide here in favor of team disband a hat trick for Tell took a double tap for Gwefix a genocide for DSB and it just kept happening one after the other three versus five engagement and they get a genocide ten minutes into the game wow that was just well played by team disband but at the same time overextension big time by the leading team they should have backed off the moment that swiftly got that spin off before they were able to lock him down uh, a little bit too greedy in the end i mean they committed five players for it and they desperately wanted to kill but they didn't get it and now they're even further behind than before i mean this is a 7k experience uh advantage for our hellborn team i mean team disband they keep surprising me they yeah. just have these like odd play styles i mean iraq now last time we saw the emerald warden i just love <laughs> it i mean at some point you just gotta ask yourself are you gonna sit back and wait for someone else to discover something new or are you gonna be the one to change the meta or are you gonna be the one to actually make the changes get ahead of the curve and right now team disband they say yes to all yeah, absolutely, 100% agree. And, you know, it is kind of funny, too, how uh, there was a forum post made about this. Yesterday, they were apparently scrimmaging the same BMG team, and, and they actually had left the game. And there's a screenshot of them basically saying, we're done, we're disbanding, you know, ha-ha. Um, a lot of people were under the assumption, and, and I, I mean, hell, I was, too. I was like, wait, wait, what just happened? But obviously, you know, Panny and, and crew, no one to be trollish somewhat, and clearly that was the case because they came here to play today. Maybe that was the mind game all along to make BMG think they weren't really going to be try hard, but they are here coming to play today. We do see some engagement here at the bottom lane. Initially on a tremble, he's forced to run away as Legionnaire will get caught out by the Magnus stun, and he goes down. Wretched Egg really wants that kill, but at what cost for him? Wretched Egg will fall. No, the blink away at the last second, and he is able to survive at least initially right here. Boxy is going to get himself killed. 
Maybe? Yeah, no, he's going to try to run around. Yeah, he's going to get himself killed right here when it's all said and done. So he will deny by the neutral creeps. It. Oh, wow, yeah, Teltuk denied Panny right there. Thanks for pointing <laughs> that out, Quincy. That's a big play indeed. I believe that was the dot from uh, Wretched Hag that allowed the deny to happen. So uh, well played. And again, they continue the pretty hefty lead here. I mean, you, you're trying to find positives right now for, for Bad Monkey Gaming and Really just not a whole lot coming out here. Minus is only 270 gold per minute. Balches are the same situation pretty much in that area. And clearly, this is just going to be a very aggressive team here from uh, Team DSP. And it's kind of funny because you were even mentioning it almost seems like some more of a passive style of a lineup initially. But it clearly turned out to be an aggressive one <laughs> at that here from uh, from this Hellborn team. Yeah, Energize, you see the Elder Parasite on Swiftblade. Oh, boy. Yeah, I um, mean, it's actually a really great tool versus the uh, Legionary in a sense, because it, even though it feels like it's an offensive item, it kind of gives you, or it uh, really gives you 250 max health. So that's only 50 health lower than the Helm of the Black Legion. Yeah. That's, uh, that, um, you know, ever since that change happened, I really thought we were going to start seeing it maybe a little more now. I think the obvious downside is the uh, the on-use modifier, whatever it's called, the activation modifier, where you can't get a shrunken head, obviously, if you... Uh, you could, but you can't use them at the same time. More so, is the uh, is the point. So, I think that, yeah, so that's what sense, keeps it's a perfect away, item for Swift Blade. Wolver yeah. has that uh, magic immune. Exactly. Um, so I like the creativity, definitely. Obviously, a hero like Berserker as well can be uh, considered pretty powerful on him too. So, yeah. Oh, Berserker! One of these days, your true potential <laughs> come to fruition. Um, I mean, at this point, I mean, it's all about the experience, and the Hellborn team is 7k ahead. Um, gold per minute doesn't really come into, uh, like, play until the 30-minute mark or something, in this case. Um, it's not going to matter too much. I mean, as long as they get the mobility items on the Hellborn team, as long as they keep the aggression up, I really don't see them or the Legion team winning a team fight for quite some time. And um, I would just love for them to get some offensive words. I don't like that they are slowing down the pace. I just feel like they should sit on BMD's asses all the time. They shouldn't let them farm at any point. They shouldn't let them have, them have the force. I mean, Legionnaire yeah. is taking a tri stack in here in his own forest. Like, for <laughs> what reason? There's no way the Legion team can team fight. Just get there. I mean, don't have Arachna sit at the top lane. Just have him sit at the bot lane instead and just pressure BMG out of their own forest. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is, is exactly, you know, gain a huge lead right here and feel like, okay, well, we're up by a good amount. Let's just play the farm game now. Because, obviously, Tremble's not a hero you want to let do that, especially. And really, overall, I mean, this is a very, very good scaling team, I think it's safe to say, uh, throughout the mid into the late game stage here from, from Bad Monkey Gaming. So, yeah, do not get them a comfort factor. And right now, they kind of are. They're giving them a little bit of room. Uh, you look at the vision here. I mean, they do have one. And, I mean, no, that's a rev war. Never mind. So, yeah, no wards past the river currently. And for how aggressive they've been, especially, only 15 minutes into this game, you think at least one, if not a couple, uh, wards uh, would be placed a little bit more aggressive here. So Mighty Marcus, he's, he finishes off those triple stack ancients on top of the jungle that you're talking about, and all of a sudden, he actually just about has his portal key. Magnus just got his, but the fact that <laughs> Legionnaire is going to be picking up his very shortly after is, is a little surprising. No doubt, and uh, obviously that's uh, going to be a big cue here for Bad Monkey Gaming to perhaps start making some plays themselves. Swift play? No, he's going to be fine. Uh, just taking some pressure there from Midas. You do see the Warp Cleft picked up by Tremble, so of course his Thunderclaw is also coming about. But yeah, again, it, I, I mean, we're seeing more of it now as he's kind of minutes past here. That uh, it seems like Team Disband is pretty content on uh, playing a little bit more of the farm game for the time being, at least. And uh, we'll see yeah. if that changes, but... I, I don't like it, but uh, hopefully they have a plan, or hopefully they're going for some kind of timing. Uh, Swiftblade is close to that pull key if you were to choose to go for it. Um, but I would really like for them to, I mean, speed things up a little bit. I don't see any reason for letting BMG back into this game. I mean, they are already so far behind, and already in the last minutes they have recovered in 1k experience or something. Uh, so they should definitely keep the pressure up. Maybe we go for a Congor. I mean, they got the Elder Parasite. It might not be an Abyssal Skull, but it still, still should be enough to secure the kill. Uh, but now with Legionnaire picking up the pull key, he's actually getting the Veil Rot here and looking for a kill. He's not level 11 yet, so I mean, the pull key is not going to matter too much. It's still an AoE disable, but it's going to be risky. I don't think that they are too secure on taking these teamfights. Oh, damn. 
Well, uh, a little bit overkill. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the Arachnus Spiderling was honestly necessary there, but, I mean, that's another benefit of Arachnus. You know, the Spiderlings are very short cooldown. And, and in fact, it's 50 seconds right now at level 2. It's 30 seconds at level 3. That's ridiculous, man. A 30-second cooldown is powerful as it is. Um, yeah, 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 that's pretty good. I didn't even realize that yeah, until I actually well, went over it. And, and again, the biggest thing to note, too, it's all physical. So even with a shrunken head, it'll still slow you heavily. And deal some oh, good damage. Power Mancer gets caught by Legionnaire, but Legionnaire the quick counterplay for Swiftblade. So yeah, I mean, sure he gets the kill, but Swiftblade also gets the kill on him. So definitely in favor of uh, Team Disband. And Swiftblade showing off his his new portal key that uh, that he does indeed go recently. Of course, with the old person at first. So uh, bottom tower at least going down in favor of BMG. But I also think uh, what did Arachna just buy? It was a Thunderclaw. Okay, so he is uh, going to be a little bit more of the farming. I mean, this also helps him when it comes to pushing as well, to be fair, so. so it, it, it can yeah. be seen as an aggressive tool here. I mean, attack speed is good in Arachna, too. And it's, like, kind of secures the late game a little bit, or at least helps him them transition into the late game. Not that I feel like it's necessary, not like I feel like it's the right choice. I feel like they should just keep the pressure up. I don't feel like they should go for towers. I mean, they've been pushing the top towers, they've been pushing the mid tower now, and sure, it's nice to get those kind of towers away from the map, but at the same time, I feel like the only, uh, like, prioritizing or, uh, priority right now is to shut down that tremble. And by doing so, you need to take over the forest. Mm -hmm. And so far, they haven't had, an, like you mentioned before, I mean, they haven't had a single offensive ward so far. And I just don't see the reason for why not. I mean, just keep going in there. They got two portal keys, no, three portal keys even. There's really no reason yeah. why not. You just want to sit on BMG all the time. I mean, just chase them around. I don't care if they're moving around. I mean, it's hard to catch a tremble, but just port. Oh, failed initiation at the top lane. Oh, yes, it was. In fact, spin coming out for the Swift Blade. It's going to be fine for Legionary. Ooh, the stun just missing from Magnus. And I think that is going to buy enough time for Legionary to ultimately get away. Yeah, especially with the Rackna coming in. He could have been in a lot of trouble. But in the end, he's able to escape right there. So a good uh, good fortune for Mighty Marcus. But again, he's, he's still looking at the five deaths in this game right now, which does lead the game right here. So he, he's kind of had a roller coaster of a ride here. And, and it's no doubt, too, a lot of people are really paying attention to him. I mean, again, especially when you're a new player, not really the most known, and you're joining the defending world final champions as a result of two, three weeks ago even. I mean, there's, there's going to be uh, there's gonna be people interested in see how you play, of course. So you got to wonder, too, if you're Mighty Marcus here, if you're feeling a little bit of pressure, but uh, which, which wouldn't be surprising. But, no, uh, I'm, I'm sure he feels pressure. I mean, he should. I mean, that's that's just standard. That's what happens when you join a new team. Um, like, in general, I mean, it doesn't matter that they are the world champions. And I don't think that Mighty Marcus necessarily feels the pressure in that kind of way. It's more like he wants to show himself. This is the, the, uh, the team that uh, kicked out his last team as well, Team Grief, from the last qualifier. Mm. Uh, Mighty Marcus was in Team Grief. So, I mean, he definitely recognizes this band and he wants his revenge. So, yeah, I feel like he's going to be a little bit shaky. And, I mean, we talked about it as well. Legionnaire might not be one of his core heroes. And, I mean, even if it might be showing a little bit, I mean, he's missed a taunt initiation right there. But, I mean, it's still, I mean, he's doing a good job in general, I feel. I mean, this is not an easy lineup to be up versus as a Legionnaire. So, I mean, yeah. I still think he should get some credit. <laughs> So we're in this pause here, uh, maybe just be a minute or two, or a little bit less. But anyways, point is, uh, talk about, uh, again, th th this event here. So like, this is the DreamHack qualifier number one, guys. Again, five qualifiers set to take place. So five North American European teams ultimately are going to qualify for DreamHack Summer 2015. Uh, again, we had the offseason qualifiers. There was two reasons for that. One was the top eight teams would ultimately qualify for the Deadeye Bounty League, which is currently going on started this last week. The $20,000 prize pool and everything. It's a great format. But also, the top eight teams would qualify for this first Dream DreamHack qualifier. So those, these are the eight teams we see right here. Now, how it works, the winning team will, of course, qualify for DreamHack. They'll be done with these qualifiers. No need. They won't be allowed, of course, to play in further ones because, obviously, there's no point. Uh, so, But the other seven teams will then still move on to play in the next one, which is every single weekend. As far as the eighth team goes, it'll be the winner of the five versus five cup every single Thursday and Friday, or every single weekend as well, which does uh, start today here. And there's like 30 or so teams in it, I believe, that's signed up, including the teams like Shrek is Love, Team Grief, as you mentioned, and so on. So uh, there's definitely some decent named teams there that you know are going to be looking for that shot in terms of qualifying for the next qualifier. So it's it's still some good haunt to play, you know, at all levels here is, I guess, the ultimate point to take from it. And, and again, those 5v5 cups, anyone can sign up. So it is also a way to just have some fun and play in some competitive haunt if you are interested. So, But 
Back to the game here, 20 minutes in. Look at the failed raw. This one coming out from Team Disband here at the bottom lane. Tremble might uh, be in trouble. Oh, yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. There's a big trample to start things off to spin the stun, and it's all going to come oh, together shit. to eventually <laughs> be a kill on a tremble. So, yeah, Belgistar has found a little bit of a groove here, 388 gold per minute now, but obviously that death will now slow him down once again. So it, it goes back to DSPN, the idea that, you know, want to keep the pressure up because you can see we were kind of giving them a little bit of a slack for it to, for a couple of minutes there, and, and you hell, Tremble all of a sudden is nearly 400 gold per minute. Crack, or uh, Ruta Z is out there at around 325 gold per minute. So they are, they are advancing, but look at Boxy, by the way, going this Astrolabe. He's done this before on a suicide head. <laughs> I think it's really good. Um, they are going to need it versus this medic uh, offensive team at the Hellborn to keep alive. Oh, and right there, Eruption comes in for Magmas. No. Astro. <laughs> he didn't activate Astro, actually. Wow, you're right. It would have been fine, but I think you forgot about it. Well, it's not not or a good item if you don't panicked. use it. <laughs> <laughs> not good point. Uh, all right, Hellborn team. Yeah, I like the Veil Rod gank. I mean, that's what it should do. I mean, however, they shouldn't care too much about the towers. They should just sit and beam these asses all the time. I mean, they should keep getting the Veil Rod. And I love to see some offensive wards. I mean, where are the wards? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I mean, hell, if anything, the, the only offensive ward in the game right now belongs to BMG here at the top lane. <laughs> that's the last thing you would expect. As uh, behind there at the top tower, but yeah, no wards right now. So, uh, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do by any means. Z Panny here, of course, being the main support, and and uh, I mean, clearly he's had a decent farm. He's 150 gold per minute, but he has Striders, man, about it. Finishes a power supply right there. So, um, you know, whether he's just not prioritizing the wards, or you know, for us as a spectator, we can't necessarily see how many wards they have available to them currently. So. They should say, have exactly, a few. They should have a few because so, I haven't yeah. seen too many in this game. And I mean, if you're poor, I mean, talk with your team. Communicate is the key to victory. And I mean, communicate with your team. Tell them, I need two wards in the courier right now. I don't care who gets this as long as someone gets it. Because that is in the end what's going to win us this game. It's nice that you do these failed rot ganks, but don't leave. They're forced. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all falling back. I mean, look at BMG at the map right now. They're farming freely all over the map. They are in the offensive forest. They are in the defensive forest. And I mean, it seems like this band, even though they are the ones who should keep the pressure up, they are kind of playing a little bit too passive. They're going for the Veil Roth again, but it's a 300 gold investment for this kill. So even if they get it, I mean, BMG are going to continue farming in all lanes, and it's in the end, it's not going to pay off. I mean, they're losing experience, that experience gain. They were up in 8k, but now they're dropping, and that's simply not what you should allow to happen, especially not when you have a lead like this. Now, they are going to find Wretched Hack, and they will get the kill. So you mentioned 300 gold investment, but at least they do come out with the kill. So, in essence, best case scenario. But, you know, I was actually going to point out, though, despite the kill happen or not, is actually Pyromancer. Yeah, nice catch there from Mighty Marcus. He was sitting around there for a while. He's being very patient and eventually finds the kill he was looking for. But now they know he's here. You see Magnus randomly stunning. Is not going to hit. And, uh, you know, they maybe figure that he's portaled out by or homecoming stone. But it is on cooldown here. So, which he just tried to use it. So, he's going to be here for a little bit. But uh, they are not going to be hunting him, clearly. Uh, but I was going to say that with the Veiled Rot, again, the, the number one reason you use Veiled Rot is to get around Ward of Sights. And we saw here in the middle lane in, in this area, I mean, there wasn't a Ward of Sight up. There is one now here, but it was just placed by Fusen, though. So, uh, before that, though, there really wasn't any vision around. So, Technically, they didn't, didn't even need the Veiled Rod uh, to su no, um, successfully get that exactly, kill. Exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, I mean, the Veiled Rod is nice, but I mean, if you don't have to, if you got wards, you don't have to make those kind of investments. Uh, they're going to go for something here again, and this time at least they got one ward, no, two wards with them. So um, I like to see this at least that they are trying to group up and do something together. Congor, sure, it's going to be nice to get them, but I mean, Arachna is not necessarily the best hero. She is not the kind of Doctor Repulsor that you feel is needed or like needs a token desperately. I mean, I feel like this is just going to give more time for this Legion team to push out their towers, get some more room at the map and continue to decrease that experience gain. I just, I, I mean, they have to do something with this, to this token at least. Otherwise, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if Team Disband keeps up the pressure. You can tell they have the golden experience has slightly gone down here now. They will kill the Congor and pretty much it, it does push that golden experience course up a little bit further. Um, token? Okay, they give it to Swiftblade. What do you think about that actually? Giving it to Swiftblade over Arachna here in this case. Mm, I guess it's fine. Uh, he's probably going to be the one on the offensive um, and be in the more risky positions than Arachna. He, he went for a Whispering Helm as well on Arachna. I'm not sure what I like that. True. Um, 
Can I get some stacks off here at Ancient we see right away? But I mean, in the end, I don't know. I mean, he's kind of trying to transition into the late game. I just don't see the reasoning. I mean, he's not going to be able to stand up versus a Legionnaire, a Virtual Hag, and a Tremble in the late game. They need to win the game right now. I yeah. mean, they have the advantage to do so. I mean, why not take advantage of it and just go finish the game and sit on BMG's asses? I, um. I, I don't know. I, I got to also, I really, I had to double check there, but uh, according to the text, did he just really, okay, no, I think he still didn't win Firebrand. Okay, yeah, he bought Alchemist Bones initially to Arachna, but then he actually wow. ended up going to Firebrand here, so yeah, it's either a troll or a misclick, whatever. Um, <laughs> but the Whispering Hill, I really want to go back to that, though, because again, the obvious thing here is that his Q is an attack modifier, his web shot. So... It does make it a little funky. Now, yeah, when you're farming especially, you're not necessarily using web shots. So for farming purposes, it's pretty solid. But when you're fighting heroes, I would think you always want that web shot up. I mean, yeah. especially since it does a dot damage now on top of the slow. So I, I, I don't – it just it's, – it's an odd pickup to me. <laughs> Is a really hard pickup, and I mean, he's not a natural farmer either. I mean, even though the final call kind of requires or uh, allows him to take stacks a little bit or flash farm, it's not. I mean, he's not going to be able to clear those tri stacks on his own. He's not going to be able to clear them fast. I mean, this is just not an app item that's like optimized for an Arachna. Yeah. Now, okay. he is this very, very good player, of course, and when it comes to micromanagement and stuff. So you know, web shot and then turning it on. We're not using a web shot for a couple of attacks. A web shot and. You know, it does last for three seconds, to be fair. So, you know, in, the, in, the, in a good player's hands, you know, perhaps that's that's where he's coming from here. But they will push the middle tower. So, again, going back to the being aggressive here, they, they are going to push in the secondary middle. And now they're going to try for a gank at the top lane as they notice Once uh, again, uh, Legionnaire and Wretched Hagger up here. Team Dispan is just, I, I feel like they are just wasting time at this point. Uh, they don't need those tower kills. I feel like that's like a wrong address of the problem. They All they need to do is sit on BMG's asses all the time and I mean just prevent them from farming. Sure, I mean it's nice to get some tower gold and all and get some more positioning or map control, but I mean in general, I mean the towers are always going to be there. They're going to come there naturally. As long as you get hero kills, then you're going to get towers. And I just feel like you should not go for tower kills whatsoever. You should never push up. You should never be five if you are in the Hellborn lineup. You should be uh, two or three running in small groups just trying to get pickoffs and just take BMG back or box them into their own base. Yeah. You look at Tremble here. Yeah, he's getting pretty scary. I mean, he's got a shrunken head now, of course. It looks like uh, I assume that's going to be a brutalizer here, with the yeah, second yeah. mighty blade that he has, and well, I mean, not really addressing him whatsoever. Yeah, well, how many does does he? Have? Yeah, he's only done a couple times. He's 0-2 and one here. It's obviously not a the greatest stat line, but 470 gold per minute is the point. And this is a a Balthazar. This is a Tremble who was middle end to start, and and he was struggling to to even reach 300 gold per minute early on in the game, let alone go above it. So. Uh, but, uh, again, it all goes back to Team Dispan perhaps just not necessarily capitalizing as much as they really should be. And and we haven't had action in a while. And that's, that's to the credit of Bad Monkey Gaming more so, that they, they've been playing passive enough and distracting enough here against DSPN. And, and by the time you got the portal keys on the necessary heroes, a Storm Spirit of Midas here. You got Wretched Hag again and going more of the utility with the Astrolabe earlier on. He's done that before. Uh, but now working towards a Hellflower, it looks like. And... Um, Quincy was pointing out too, you know, the first time we've actually seen the Elder Parasite apparently on a Swift Blade here, so um, picked up. But there's the Didn't Brutalizer. Didn't we see it last qualifier? Didn't we see uh, Pewie uh, do it on a Swift Blade as well? He went I don't think he... He went Elder Parasite as well. He did, but yeah, actually Quincy made the point he didn't technically stat track from uh, uh, the qualifiers. Right. Because it was against, you know, not necessarily the best of the best to be fair, so. And I, I think that's somewhat reasonable, but... So on record technically the first game. Um, they're going to push in here. Now, again, you made the strong point. Iraq now level four uh, pres precision. Wow, precision. Yeah, it's actually turned on only heroes right now. It's not That's affecting right, yeah. the creeps. She needs to change. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a minor thing, but it's definitely still at the same time. You want to get as much damage as possible. So they did deny the tower, but yeah, not the biggest deal in the world. Um... But yeah, maybe that comes. Uh, that's a lot of the fact of yeah, you don't play Arachna the most. <laughs> no one, no one does. So, not uh, yeah, it can be. Uh, I mean, look at the gold per minute and experience right now. I mean, yeah. it's, 
like continuing the strength for the Legion team, and they are starting to catch up. And I mean, even if those two teams were to be even, and yeah, it's, uh, Rakna and Swift play, they are building a kind of a good ground into that late game. But I still would favor the Legion team if with this tremble, he's closing in on 500 GPM right now, and I just. I don't know. I mean, was it really best idea to back off right there? I mean, they had a token. I mean, couldn't I have pushed, tried to get the, the melee rex possibly? Yeah, the token was very low on. Uh, it was maybe like 30 seconds to get that point. So yeah, they, they did. it's that's one of those. Uh, I, I can get why they fell back because we do talk about a lot. You know, okay. you, you don't want to be pushing when it's just about to wear off and then have it completely backfire. But it, it does go back to, to the overall idea that, again, team disband, it's, it, it, they're just not doing enough. They're not going over the hill. They're at the top of the hill, basically, but they're not going <laughs> over it uh, to, to just gain their way and finish the race here, in essence. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're look at Peltazar, man, 500 gold per minute on Tremble now, and, and he already has another nearly 3,000 gold saved up. On yeah, he's looking scary, life. really scary. I'm not sure what he would go for next item. I'm not necessarily the tremble player, but I would assume that he's looking to pick up maybe a wing bow or maybe a little bit more tanky. I'm not sure. They got the storm spirit on Maida, so I feel like he can't afford to go for a little bit more of a greedy damage item. Yeah. Oh. And Astro on Hag on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, again, he's, he, we've, we've seen him do this the one time I think we've seen him play it before. They're going to try to stun him out. They aren't going to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> they knew so exactly much. where he was. and. Matter That's a tricky it. position to stun if you're yeah. like a toll fan. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not easy to hit it. <laughs> even oh, right bottom there. lane. They catch Midas. Spiderling comes out on a Midas as he's in the Storm Spirit. Actually, he's going to set up a turn on Arachna though with this, some assistance, and they will get the kill in the end. And AC, yeah, they're going to kill Spiderling because Midas getting so low. Magnus, he has a portal key stun. Oh, he doesn't even need the portal key. He stuns in. He's going to play away though. He doesn't okay. want to go for the oh. finish. Yeah, would have taken at least. Two, three auto attacks, probably, so it wouldn't have been worth it. Yeah, I guess he was afraid for a backup as well. Legionnaire was out of mana, but I guess he didn't really pick up on that. Yeah. I mean, so they push the top tower at least here. Uh, does. This team just Once again, I don't feel like the t these towers give them anything, more or less. I mean, the, it's, it is always going to be on the map, and I mean, there's grouping up. I just feel like it's a waste. I mean, BMG continues to pick up on that experience gain. That's what happens when you push. I feel like you should use at least, or uh, like at the top, two heroes at the same time to push the towers at this point. Uh, especially when you know for a fact the Legionnaire is on the other side of the map, so the Legion team is not going to have an initiation. They're not going to be, you know, looking to defend the tower. So wasting three towers attacking the tower is... Uh, it's not efficient. I mean, efficiency is doing things right, but effect effectiveness is doing the right things. And right now, I feel like going for these towers, mm, not really optimal. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Tremble, once he gets a shrunken and a brutalizer alone, uh, he raises his record to 9 and 3 overall. So, you know, obviously, pretty damn good at what, 75% there, quick math coming out. So, he's. Uh, and he has another 3,700 gold again. So he's going to be even getting another bigger item on top of that. And now, I, you know, I know we've been talking about as a team here uh, for the most part as a team to span their decision making. But honestly, again, the item pickups, there have been some questionable ones. And I think the biggest one is that Whispering Helm <laughs> on oh, Iraq. Yeah. Now, they are going to catch Wretched Hag right there. So. Boxy won 8 and 0. I mean, this has to be one of the worst performances he's ever had. So, <laughs> safe to say he's not uh he's not I mean, I can't, we can't blame him though. I mean, it's all in the draft. I mean, he he doesn't have any room to farm. He he doesn't have anything else in the suicide lane. I mean, the force is taken by Legionnaire. Tremble is soaking up everything else and Legionnaire oh, nice PK reaction there from Mike yeah. Marcus. Oh, uh, is he still in trouble? You see the obliterate, it's a little bit of damage. Arcane Vortex, he will catch Arachna actually. Was trying to chase. Mora is going to get caught though by Swift Blade. And Guifix is apparently now a champion of New Earth, 9 0 and 3. Two players still don't have a death here, both Magmus and Swiftly on the Hellborn side. And here comes that push. No buybacks. Well, Mora does, but, you know, really, is that uh, big deal? 10, <laughs> 10 seconds left. So. Uh, especially when that ultimate is down. Oh, they're going to try for something right here. They jump with the taunt. Get to the bottom of the background. Trample on a minus done. Sammy, do you see Legionnaire dropping quickly? He goes down. Trample in the midst of it, but he's falling way too fast. I mean, he's far, but that was, that seemed a little silly. He just kind of went in almost. Three versus five. What were they thinking? Hag's going to fall. Oh, boy. Bad Monkey Gaming. Not typical decision-making from them right there. They didn't want to lose the melee racks, which is understandable, but sometimes you just have to cut your losses and do the best out of the situation, and that was definitely one of those times. 
Oh, they're, okay, they're chasing. They do pick up a kill onto, uh, on a panty right there, at least, and maybe another one on the Peewee. As, yeah, he's going to take a set of <laughs> almost got Midas. But Midas is able to live. If he actually used a spider lane, that would have probably been a kill. We do see Magmas stunning away and portal key, and he should be fine now, too. So uh, they get a couple of pickoffs there, but uh, yeah, it's exactly. You know, sometimes you got to cut your losses, and in the end, not only do they have a, several deaths happen that probably shouldn't have, but they still lose the melee racks anyways, and it forced a buyback on a tremble. I mean, granted, he has another 4,100 gold still saved up. But, yeah, not uh, not the prettiest fight there for BMG. So the lead gets back to a little bit uh, a little bit more comfortable once again for DSBN. 7,000 gold, 6,500 experience. And again, having the racks down is big news. But Magnus oh, Trumbull. in. Uh, he got the backup coming in, but that was a little bit of a premature stun. I mean, okay. Trumbull didn't know for a fact that Magnus had vision on him. Yeah. He should have just been patient. And now cut through the funnel. All of a sudden, he's realizing he's kind of by himself. Eruption being channeled on Magnus. He poured it in a little bit late right there. The illusion goes out quickly, but Tremble not so much. He's got that shrunken head, but Swift slashes. It doesn't give two shits about a shrunken head right here. Boris goes down, and Tremble, no, the arcade vortex. He's going to stay alive barely, but I think he's going to fall as soon as he comes out. Yeah, the spin's still happening, and he will go down. Legionnaire has a taunt, but is not going to be able to catch anybody, and that will be the end of that exchange there. So kind of a funky exchange, but Paltazar does ultimately fall when it's all said and done. He's down for 70 seconds now, and Congor's up. I think you do Congor here for DSPN. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that token is going to be big. Um, I mean, Tremble used one buyback as well in the last fight. And, I mean, when you're looking to take a game into later stages, I mean, which BMG definitely is right now, uh, that's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, he only got one more buyback. I mean, they know for a fact if they get that rid of the, or rid of that as well, they all all they need to do is focus Tremble in those fights. It can be tricky even though, uh, or now when the Minus got the Storm Spear, but still, I mean, Buyback on a card carry plus a million racks. I feel like this band is doing really good, and they are looking scary. Yeah. Yeah, feeling pretty good once again. Yeah, Rack again. We talked about the Whispering Ham. Did get the Geometer's Bane now, though. Another 2,000 gold saved up for him. So, I, I I mean, he does have the Homecoming Stone there. He has an Energizer, of course. So, a couple of slots that eventually could upgrade into bigger and better items, of course. We'll see what uh, what that ultimately ends up being. But, yeah, Swift Blade is actually the one really on top there. 483 GPM. Uh, for his team, pretty much neck and neck with Tremble now as a result. Projected win percentage apparently, wow, pretty good for DSPN actually. Again, that has to do with all the stats and some formula of Quincy's that uh, puts it all together and uh, their chances. So, yeah, a little bit higher than what we're used to seeing in most cases. So, uh, DSPN in, in a good spot here again. But They need to be careful now, though. I mean, they took Congo way later than they should have. I mean, Tremble was down for 50 seconds or something, but they didn't capitalize on that opportunity. And now they're trying to take it, but BMG, they are a Veil Drought. They are going for it. I mean, if they win this fight, I mean, they are back into the game. Congor, he's, he is dropping, but you're right. They went way late right here. Legionnaire does jump in, and here we go. Swift Slashes are bouncing around. Trigger are up on several higher heroes. As Tremble Eruption in the background. Tremble's about half-life. They do get the one kill onto Arachna, but Swift Play still doing some work. Down goes Tremble right there, and with him did especially. He buys back, actually. He can come with the mount, remember, so he can join the fight pretty quickly. Pyromancer gets picked off. Midas in the meantime. Midas being chased down. She will go down off to the side. Cthulhu Fawn, he's kind of going back and forth. And it looks like that'll be the end of it. They're going to go to finish off Congress. The Tremble bought back, but he didn't import with the mount. I, I, maybe it was on cooldown, I guess, but. Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah, it that makes sense. Yes, oh, there but goes that, Yeah, that's the second buyback. I mean, the, all the Hellborn team needs to do now is get one pickoff on Tremble, and then I know for a fact that there's nothing that uh, the Union team can do to stop them. I mean, one pickoff. That's all they need now. Then they can close the game. Yeah. Yeah, team disband, so maybe not the hugest fans of in terms of uh, their their momentum and kind of slowing things down a little bit. But at the same time, clearly they're they're making some correct moves here and and now get the most comfortable lead of the game. And like you said, maybe one pick off here on well, yeah, definitely one pick off on Tremble. Then pretty much the game secured, as he is absolutely out of buybacks now. So he spent a lot of golds despite his GPM being pretty high. Uh, a lot of gold has been spent, of course, nearly four thousand, I'm sure or so on uh, on the buybacks here. So if you take that in consideration, and yeah, I can definitely understand why the Hellborn team is now feeling pretty good about themselves. Racked at this time around, she actually gets the po or the uh, the token of life here, and I think something's coming on the courier. Oh, just a homecoming stone, never mind. So they get the bottom tower, the last <laughs> well, one there. Yeah, not not a big deal. They get two Astros, by the way, here on the Hellborn team. I'm not sure about oh. the reasoning for that. Yeah, that's... Pyromoster uh, got one and Ketolfan got one. 
And those were late Astro pickups. I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking at this. Yeah, Pyromancer still doesn't have it on the street. So, about, so at least six minutes ago, he did not have it. And even even sooner than that. So, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, and by that time, Cthulhu one already had it for a little bit. Not too sure what uh, what his logic is there, but, hey, I guess uh, for split pushing purposes, it's solid. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, I guess. Uh, it shouldn't happen, but, I mean, sometimes it does. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, even for the best. Well, um, Noel Stone on to Magnus, and uh, uh, there, there's several reasons for that. I, I can see where he's coming from here. You know, Legionnaire, Mora uh, can uh, use their mana sunder and wants to prevent that, so. It's a uh, very late. Nope. Did he sell it? Wait. Oh, I guess he sold um. it. So it wasn't actually a Nolson, it was just the pattern? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so never mind. 4,500 gold saved up. Holy crap. Gonna be buying something big. Yeah. Barbed armor legionnaire. Let's see that here. We got two minutes and forty-five seconds on that token. I would like for Team Disband to, to make a push out of it, but I guess they're comfortable just sitting back. I mean, they have been very patient so far, and I mean, I mean, so far it's working out. I mean, they didn't necessarily have to take this kind of route, but I mean, they have. They built items towards the late game, and oh, what has just happened in the top lane? Uh, oh, they tried to get a gank. Oh, yeah, on gank on Richard Hack, but he's able to escape. Yeah. I'll play with boxing. It's away right there, so. Do you see, uh, speaking of Null Stone, Min is, already, is ahead, 13 11 kills. We've been missing. All right, look at that. So, it's a nice yeah, update. That's interesting. There. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, they are playing with Kraken. I'm not sure who in place have, to be honest, but. Um, uh, who replaced uh, Labyrinth for the mid roll. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Gotcha. So keep an eye on that. Again, Noel's done 3 nothing over Fresh in the Dead Eye Bounty League. And what well, was Tuesday, so <laughs> it's uh, a yeah, surprising. Maybe they were uh, waiting for this event instead yeah. <laughs> to show their real skills. Yeah, focused on DreamHack here. Understandable. Yeah, but I, I mean, they got a new addition to their roster as well, so they are definitely pumped. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, they want to prove themselves big time. That's a strong team, man. I mean, Zibe, Probusk, we already knew, you know, those players alone very strong. Serenia has proven to be a very solid captain on the scene, and, and now you add Crack A to the roster. Labyrinth was a great player, so, I mean, it's, it, you know, a little, little bit of fortune to hear that uh, he's no longer part of their starting five. I'm sure he'll find another home somewhere, but uh, Crack A, again, he's clearly proven himself, so. Yeah, hopefully he can bring a lot of insight as well in terms of, like, uh, draft and, like, uh, rotations, which... BMG has proven to be very strong at so yeah. um, hopefully bringing some you know fresh new ideas to uh, this mid roster. Absolutely, top lane, Arachna pushing in the tower using that true strike of hers. As well as just solid damage. Uh, she has a null stone on the other hand. You mentioned that. Ah, clever. So the tower goes down <laughs> with these. And again, going to play this pretty patient here. Token alive. About 30 seconds remaining, so it is getting pretty low. Talked oh, about the I wonder how the Hellborn team is going to deal with this. There They're going to jump in the background. Yes, yes, they do. On to Magmus. The quick spider link comes out as well. Magmus will fall right off the bat, though. But Wretched Ag off to the side is also taking some good damage. Tremble in the meantime trying to hold his, his, his ground. But again, if he dies, he, it, it's over for him as far as no buybacks. He is going to go down. The Arcane Vortex just stalls the inevitable right there. Minus, he stuns up with the transmute. But I think BMG is aware that this could be the end of game number one. And very likely is right here. Team to span. Going to take the first game, most likely. I mean, I guess BMG not giving in just yet, but with Tremble dead for another minute, you've already lost the middle. The top one's going down right here in the background. Oh, There's nice that stun. jump from Magmus as well as Cthulhu von Magmus, of course, buying back, post-hasting in. They take out the melee racks and going to go further. So, yeah, Brush BMG. Hack? Oh, my Incredible. God. <laughs> He's up here. And he actually does end up falling in the end, so. Cleaning it up, and there's the vote to concede. GG well played. Game one in favor of Team Disband here for the DreamHack Qualifier's first event. So how about that? What a fun start we have here. <laughs> they keep impressing me. I mean, this Team Disband, they're really fun to watch. They're always playing aggressive. Uh, maybe not to the extent that I would have loved to see in this particular game, seeing as they had a kind of an advantage that they had. But still, I mean, they get things done. They play their style. And, I mean, in the end, it worked out. Um, I feel like it came down a lot to the draft in this game, though. I feel like BMG really put himself in a very shitty position. Uh, not going to lie about that. Five 
like heroes without any lockdown. I mean, the only thing they had was a legionnaire taunt, and he, he was dependent on Polky to get that. So in the early game, they had absolutely nothing to put up with uh, the aggressive uh, pseudo trilion coming out from Hellworm. But in the end, I mean, yeah. well played by Team Disband. Um, I hope that they keep this up for game number two. Absolutely. I mean, clearly a team that's motivated here. And, and several of these players, I mean, they have DreamHack experience. I know for a fact Panny's been there. Obviously, uh, Pee Wee, of course, he's definitely been there. I'm not sure about the others, but um, as far as that's concerned, again, they have some, some experience at least. And just because they're a new team on the scene right now doesn't mean uh, that they aren't one to reckon with. So that's what we're talking about. You know, all eight of these teams really do have some kind of shot here. And what is the first qualifier of set up to be five? for Dream Act Summer 2015. Anyways, guys, going to take a short break right here. Game number two, though, coming up around the corner. Stay tuned. Team to stand up one to nothing over Bad Monkey Gaming. Will BMG be knocked out this early, or will they fight and force a game number three? Stay tuned, guys. Here at Honkast, the Dream Act qualifiers continue. Game number two.